after the overthrow, there wasn't open resistance. There wasn't. His overthrow in 1967, uh, 68, no party member, if they did it, they did it secretly. <laughs> But openly, never. Like when Kwame Nkrumah was agitating, everything was open. Thank, thank you so much for that. All right, now, um, is it possible that these people didn't understand the idea because it was not explained to them in the language that can, they could understand? Or is it, uh, maybe like, for example, somebody getting this high education in the West and then coming to Africa to explain high concept thing to people who needed it to be explained in the terms and terminology they could understand. Is that what led to the fact that people didn't really understand what the idea of Pan-Africanism mean? And what does it really mean? What is the meaning of Pan-Africanism. For the mass of people, they knew what Pan-Africanism was. If I tell you that they don't, then I didn't know what was happening, you know. But I knew what was happening concerning uh, the so-called uh, Matimohu people versus uh, the CPP. For instance, people knew that they have been subjugated for long. The white man has sat on them for too long and they want their independence. They want to rule themselves. But how to go about it, maybe Kwame Nkrumah's style of ruling the country became very harsh. But I remember that as a young man, we all sang praises for Kwame Kwame, and we mean it, we meant it. But the economic situation was used to overthrow Kwame Nkrumah in the besides the independence that he had won for us. Because as a human, as human beings, we need to eat the economic factor of independence can betray a country. Right now, there is so much opposition in this country against the the government because they felt that the government has more or less made them uh, hungry things are expensive even local foodstuffs are very expensive they pay mm -hmm. It's not good. Imagine you work in Ghana right now and they pay you 1,000 CDs, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6 CDs. All these monies can't buy you what you want. It can't buy you sufficient food, it can give you the house. So, since all these things are bothering people, and you could see it when Kwame Nkrumah was overthrown, that even some of his 
followers were jubilating. You know, so Pan Africanism for Africans, especially Ghanaians, we knew what it was and we supported it. But the economic problems along with that made us uh, very, very uh, on understanding. In other words, you understand one thing, but another thing is used to force you to forget what <laughs> you wanted Pan-Africanism to be. So for this reason, the economic factors, how a man will put food on the table for his family, all these things were used to let us put Pan-Africanism aside. This is what I see, and this is what still goes on. Our economy, our natural resources are being siphoned to the white man's country. And then from there, it becomes a product, an imported product. And when it becomes an imported product, the price is such high or higher that you can't buy it. It's only a few, a few people, especially those who have education and work with the government or work with the party you know, they could afford it. And so it becomes difficult to really discuss Pan-Africanism and African economic system. Now that you have African common market, <laughs> we will live to see what Pan-Africanism means and vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Pan-African economic systems.